for game number four between our teams. It's going to be Battlefield of Eternity, as we're going to see the good guys take the first pick. And I'm kind of hoping they have something wonky underneath their sleeve here. Yeah, it would be really cool to see something uh, a bit more out of the ordinary, but then again, I'm interested to see what exactly Dinghurst is now going to do. So, Dinghurst looked strong so far. For me, at this point, I want to know what Main is going to play, because he showed three different heroes that we have not seen from him in the past, in the last three games. So what's going to happen on map number four? Is it going to be a traditional Mana pick, or are we actually going to see him with something completely different? For me, I think... Uh the traditional pick is the way I want to go with BOE. I want to see his leaping on this battleground. I just think it really helps him propel forward. This is a battleground that Dignitas is doing better and better on for the last few times they've played on it. They just seem to understand how to control the situation around the middle, and then when they need to pop off, they just ramp up. And part of that is because of that Mane Li Ming. Mane on Murky. Mane on Murky. I'd be okay with it. I mean, <laughs> I would love to see his build. I wonder if he would go for Autograph Blow Up, which would uh, be the, the mage equivalent to what Murky can pull off. Murky can pull some. Okay. Yeah, they can pull off the, uh, the autograph combo. You can get it done. Get that spell shield set up. You just move in. And you take out opposing members. There is no correct Murky build. Okay. <laughs> All right, Caldor. <laughs> he just confirmed that Murky is completely flexible and versatile. You can pick any talent on it and pull off any victory. Just roll the dice. Just roll the dice. That's what you did it. anyways if you picked him. Nah, there's some slime builds. We'll get something figured out. We'll get him taught. Fnatic, that's still your hope for the murky build. They said they had a murky build ready or a murky composition for the mid-season brawl that they never got to play and that at some point they still want to pull that off. I'm not sure I quite Starting sure. to see a trend. First boy band video has been promised. Murky has been promised and yet none of it has been delivered on. Is Fnatic slacking? That's the real question. That's actually a really good question. Quacknix, what's up with that? Quackness, now let's go in there. Now, going into BLE here for game number four. Uh, Dignitas, obviously, coming into here. Do you think they just finished it out with a 3 1? This is one of their best battlegrounds as of late in terms of stats. They just seem to deliver every single time. They, sh I, I, That's what I would expect from them, that yeah. they actually now completely focus on the game and take it. But I guess we will we'll be able to say a little bit more once the draft starts to get a bit of an idea. But Dignitas is the favorite here. Them dropping a map was already a tiny upset. Map scores really count for phase two here, even more so than for phase one. So it's going to be important for uh, Dignitas to make sure that they're not losing another map against the good guys. Yeah, Sylvanas and Arthas is actually some of the uh, main foundation heroes that we see a lot from Dignitas. In fact, this is the battleground that we start to see a lot of Arthas in particular. He's able to lock down the entire area, float around the mortal phase, find a situation that you move in for a fight. And then Sylvanas, like we saw from Fnatic earlier, is one that can be pulled out to really kind of snowball a victory. Didn't quite work out for Fnatic, but we've seen Dignitas pull it off multiple times. The top three are actually the only ones that pull out Sylvanas on this battleground because they're that, um, I guess, adamant that they can actually pull it off. Yeah, I would definitely agree with that. And Sylvanas is just not played as often as a couple of builds. I would say the game that we've seen earlier where Sylvanas was played was also a really close one. But usually she's one of these accelerants, one of the heroes oh. that allows you to get a game going faster if you already feel that you are the better team. Malfeo and Sylvanas, that seems like the dream team now. With Malfeo being picked up, you're able to shred through those immortals. You can pretty much guarantee they're going to grab oh, those okay. and move forward, and then you just push forward. And then, if you get to a spot where you can actually turn off the tower, Malfeo is actually enabled to dive on behind that fort and start killing stuff. It sounds kind of scary, actually. I kind of want to try it. Of course you do. <laughs> After seeing Team Liquid <laughs> pull off the Malfeo on this battleground, it seems kind of fun. Well, Malfeo, I feel, is a bit... He's a bit like Lunara when it comes to damage. Sure. In burst, he's not as good as other heroes. Totally. But if you have him alone on the Immortal, the continuous damage allows you to solo the Immortal in a very reasonable amount of time. That's what Liquid was trying to do when they were zoning um, the Immortal there. But if you have, for example, a Vala or you have the Greymane, they're just way better in just dishing out the damage really fast. Yeah, straight up in the front there. It's actually kind of interesting to see Grayman kind of fall down. He's been in second rotations more and more often. Uh, with the Vala coming out, that Ario, gosh, the uh, Eastern scene has really showed us that strength that Vala and the Ario continues to be mixed up in the rotations here. Uh -huh. But I think uh, double supports in this battleground, they, this might be the one that it starts to fall off a little bit, or do you think the sustain a little bit too much? I mean, the sustain fight still helps you. It depends on what your opponent is going to try and do. I don't think that there's really a battleground where double support completely falls off. So uh, the fights in the middle, for example, if you have long and drawn out fights there, that alone just really helps you quite a bit. So I don't know. I don't think that it's one of those things where it falls off too much. I think there's a really good chance we're going to see that again. Well, let's see if double support will come in for our teams 
Game number four, Digging Toss and Team Good Guys. Going out of here. Team Good Guys, what are you going to ban away? The Uther again? I guess Uther and Genji are once again the heroes that we are thinking about. Maybe together with the Nuburak that you think about the most. But this map adds a few additional heroes to that set where you have to think, are we afraid of our opponent chunking down the Immortal? But the good guys are actually approaching this a bit differently, banning the Tassadar first. So it's a bit of a soft ban against hyper carry. So especially melee assassins, as for example, the other one. And it kind of takes away that Tracer slightly. However, Dingtoss has played Tracer in the past without the Tassadar. Something they still have to think about. Genji will be the answer back from Dig, not allowing them to get that hyper mobility that can be effective on BOE. And now you all just have to answer the question, is it going to be the Uther or will we see the Anubrak there? Do they prioritize something else so highly that they're willing to give both of them up to Dignitas, Ding Ding which I would say probably not, unless we're seeing Malthriel really spike up to that level. Moment of truth will pop out for our teams. There's also the thought about Illidan. Illidan, I think, on this battleground is not one that you want to grab as early, but it could see him in the second rotation after grabbing that Uther. Just for Team Good Guys in particular, I feel like that Illidan has allowed and felt a little bit better in their team fights. Yeah, the thing is also that with Illidan, you risk losing control of the game early on. Mm -hmm. If you pick an Illidan very early and your opponent drafts something that helps them to really snowball with an Immortal, Il Sylvanas might, for example, be good or just dominate the early game. If you lose the first two Immortals, then uh, the opponent could really just snowball it hard. Get structures, get a lead-in experience, take it with the talent advantage into the next fight. So with that, you have to be a little bit careful. Yeah, I agree with you. And I think you also have to round out your composition with a very strong range, whether it be LNR or that Vala. So we'll see what uh, Team Good Guys will be moving into as they do elect to pick up the Uther. Team Ding Toss on the left side still have that Anubrak available for the pickup. But they did put Malthiel higher in the last rotation. Let's see if they want to move into him again. I would say we're going to see, it's very likely that we're going to see the Anubarak. I guess we could also see JPL play around the Stitches again, since this is a map where with the standoff that oftentimes happens in the middle of the map, a hook can get you a huge amount of value. But it's an Aureal and the Malthiel. Okay, so Malthiel spiking up to the top again, and once more Aureal being taken here immediately. It's more and more becoming a battle of supports more than anything else. I think it's a good way to really kind of put the entire meta under the umbrella for the last couple of, uh, what, three, four weeks. It's really been about the supports moving into them, getting the rotations, and now with the double support just coming up to a higher standard level of play. I agree with you, man. It's something that you just try to move into. Uh, I actually think it's this week is where we see it for the first time in HGC spike to that level. True. The last week, we have seen a few teams going into it. And then after last week, and especially Team Liquid's success against Dignitas, it seemed everyone just accepted, OK, this is the way to go right now. Double support, we have to do it. And uh, if we do anything else, we will very likely not win these games. The only team that we have today seen move away from that was Fnatic. But everyone else was really heavily looking at double support. And this is something that's just happening once again. Va Aureal and Uther setting that up as is. Vala now taken as a potential for the hyper carry. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes you chip a Rega in. And I'm just curious to see which one of the two teams will use the double support here first. Well, the double support is becoming big for all of our teams. It gets me excited to see Expert, because I want to see their variation and how they're going to handle the double supports. Are they going to go full opposite way and try and go burst and try and get through it? Or are they going to have their own variations that they mixed in? Team Dignitas will ban out the Illidan. No now longer available. Yeah, now Illidan is something that we already expected after seeing the last map. The question was really, what what are the good guys going to do once they don't have Illidan available to them? And Dignitas is basically posing the same question. They're saying, guys, you played him twice now. You looked good in both games. You won one of those two. And now we're just going to make sure that you don't get your hands on Illidan. So show us what else you got there. There's also Malthiel that was taken away. That's two heroes that anti-hero plays. Now, of course, he's really good on a lot of other heroes. He's playing a lot of Chen. We've seen him uh, numerous times on the Leoric. And uh, there's a lot of heroes. The Haka, he has played that earlier. True. So all of these heroes would still fit for the solo lane. And in the meantime, Dignitas just have to decide what are we going to do right now in terms of our range carry. Vala has been taken away from us. Lunara has been banned out. So who's going to be the hero that provides Aureol with the energy she needs to get the heals through?
That's a good question here with Vaughn taking away Lenar put up. Malfeo does pretty decent with the Ariel, just as a, as a note for those at home. If you do have an Ariel and you're stuck with Malfeo, it's not the worst hero to be with, especially with that Tormented Souls later on at level 10. Diva and Rhaegar mixed up again. Dignitas has gone full on with this Diva train now. This is the third time that we're we'll going to be seeing this matchup yep. for Dignitas. And the double support, and it really works for them because you have multiple health bars on Diva already. So she can use that to her advantage. You have a double support behind her that can focus on the rest. And you have a retreat tool or a tool that can break up an opponent's composition in a 5 versus 5 fight. So that double support plus D.Va is really working well. Sting calls it set up. Now, good guys on the right side. I am wondering if we might see the Chen once again with the Illidan being out. I wonder with the Elusive Brawler how well you would handle the pressure from Malfeo coming your way. First off, you would get more auto attacks than him, so you get that reset up pretty quickly. It is scary, though, because Chen's one of those nice massive health bars that Malfeo could be effective against. Yeah, that's one of the things that would definitely worry me. But they need that top laner. Maybe even a Sonya? Can we see that? Would that be something they consider? They go instead into Li Ming and into Greymane. Wow. So I suppose that... Triple backline? I guess you consider Greymane a melee, but still. No, it's more or less a triple backline comp that we have for right no. now. I'm curious who plays what in this setup. We're going to find out soon. I'm more curious as to what Dignitas answers back with. And triple black line, I think Hammer is ridiculous for breaking it down. But will Hammer be enough with the Ariel? Would she fit in this composition? I'm thinking auto attacker. Hammer both gone. in this? Go down. Yeah. Within a Nubarak and a Li Ming and a Greyman? Easy, man. You get the resistance of one and you shred. I'm telling you, man. Sergeant Hammer is like the secret OP against triple back line. I have to question your sanity at this I'm point. telling you, man. We got to try it sometime. Uh, no, we're definitely we not. We got to play it. <laughs> you have to give it a try before you say no to it. You can't just say no to random things. You got to give it some kind of weight. Did you see that damage output and the stun? You can even move in with a cocoon and just say whatever. And, and then Sergeant you have a Hammer. Great from a mile away, just killing them all before they even get their damage off. It's totally yeah. worth it. It's good. Goldan <laughs> was the final pickup I'd on the left side. I'd rather have you pick the Murky. Nah, man. I'm telling you. I've, I've never been on the Sergeant Hammer train, but as of late, pff, triple backline, you just destroyed it completely. Come on, guys. It's true. Give me some screenshots of you playing Sergeant Hammer against triple backline. Send him to Kalidor, and he will be surprised to see the results. I'm telling you. It's good. In the A-Hero League, I'm not surprised about anything <laughs> anymore. <laughs> You do have a point. You do have a point. Yeah. Gold Air for the <laughs> final pickup on the bottom side here will be uh, here for that Ariel. So they do have the poke, and Gold Air is great too. If he's able to hit that corruption on any of these targets, Gold Air or uh, Gold or Vala, gosh, Greymane or even Li Ming, they're going to get pretty low. So let's go ahead and get this started up here. Game number four Dignitas taking on the good guys. Game number four, everybody. We have Dignitas going up against the good guys. To the left side, Bakery on Rhaegar for Team Dignitas. Snitch on the Oriole this time. Zelia on Malthiel. We have JPL on D.Va and Mene, not on the Sergeant Hammer, playing the Gulda. He's missing out, but on the right side, Team Good Guys would die to Sergeant Hammer if they were picked up. We have Anti Hero on Grey Main, Zay on Vala, Kronos on Uther, Raid Balls on Li Ming, and BKB on a new Barak. All right, let's see if they can take a second game of Dignitas and tie the score. The arrow build has been chosen on the side of Vala already. And I really want to see how they fare against this setup that Dignitas is running here. Because we have seen that double support, the Malthiel, the Diva, all these heroes have already played a role in the series. And so far, good guys have never really been able to break through all of this. Not quite here. They're going to need to if they even want to continue this series against Dignitas. Good guys continue to poke on the right side, but JPL comes in, he brooms everyone away. And it's Rhaegar versus Greymane in that top lane. Surprisingly, Rhaegar could actually do pretty well on that lane simply because he has a stain. Greymane kind of has to all in on a couple of those fights. It's just funny what kind of lanes you see now that double support is such a this meta a is must have in a lot of situations. It's full pinata, man. Like literally you just knock on the front door and this full candy comes out. It's so much different type of stuff is happening. I kinda love it. It's interesting to see how different everyone is playing right now. Yeah. Yeah. You don't like it. 
There's no solid foundation for Kalidor. No, I, I really just think that it can be... From an observer's perspective, I actually think that it's sometimes very attractive since the fights are long and drawn out. Just I can understand that some players don't really enjoy playing it because it's so difficult to take targets down and really have a, an enjoyable fight or really a strategy behind your own setup. We could see that in the last game, for example, how difficult it was to kill individual heroes. So support seemed to be extremely powerful which prolongs everything, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. I think it's just a, a question of preference, I would say. Yeah, different take on here with the Storm and how to play it. Well, Immortal spawning here on the right, and good guys will start to poke. JPL's on the harassment already, and Team Good Guys needs to find a way to sneak into this Immortal. Team Dignitas is realizing, okay, Team Good Guys, they have members here that can do well against the Immortal. If any of them sneak on by, they could be in a spot to shred this thing. So Dignitas is setting up for defense. Yeah, they're just trying to burst that down. I really feel this is also one of the main reasons because or why they're going for a triple backline here. Because triple backline is really that composition that everyone, for a reason, says has no real, no real value in comparative. I think it's more an adjustment to the map than anything else. Let's try to burst that down. And they have, if you look at the heroes they have, it's all about the immortal pressure. They have Greymane, Vala, and they have the poke from uh, Li Ming. So this is really looking that the main idea of the good guys is, yes, we go into a comp that we would probably not use on any other map and just try and burst it down as fast as we possibly can. Things will get better for Dignitas Toss at level 10. Horrify in particular, if it catches any of these backline assassins, that will be a dead target right away. But for the first Immortal phase, Team Good Guys takes the advantage. They'll be pushing in this bottom lane with multiple members, and their poke is pretty scary. You have Zayon the Vala bringing out the Hungering Arrow, can chunk down members, and you also have Raid Boss with that Lee Me, who's just shelling out spells. Yeah, the early Immortals won't be doing too much damage, since of course that beast scales better into the late game. But if now Zay is able to get a decent amount of stacks already this early on, on his Hungering Arrow, and they head into the second Immortal phase, they should be able to do a lot here. And Dignitas is going to realize that too. Dignitas is going to look at this and say, hey, guys, we need to make sure that we are fighting against him earlier, but look at this. Zelia might actually fall here. Malfi a little bit too far out, and then comes JPL and hits the defense <laughs> matrix, and that saves them. Unbelievable. Unbelievable, I gotta agree with you. Zelia trusting JPL there, dives into the middle of the fight to get the heals consistently out there and wait for Stitch to bring out his heal as well. The defense matrix, perfect from JPL and the teamwork on point. Yeah, I can just imagine Zelia just team, team, he needs help. He needed healing. JPL's like, I got you, jump him in my arms, my little mech arms. I'll keep you nice and healed up with my triangle of defying death. Yeah, I think the heal was more so Oriel's thing, but in negating the damage, that was a good one. Anyways, the camp has been taken at the bot lane, and Dignitas is a bit faster. TGG was looking for an opportunity to maybe invade, but they are taking their own camp very early at the right side, so they are actually aiming to uh, get their Shaman camp. Already on the right side, they're pushing that top. Staying pretty close in experience. Team Dignitas will be working on the turrets here on the right side, but shouldn't be able to get too much. At seven, I'm looking at Uther. Dude, just go for the cleanse here. No. Nope. Not even. <laughs> just goes for it instantly. <laughs> Not even considering it for a second here. Well, we have 25 extra damage now on the Q talent, on the arrow for Vala on level four and the repeating arrows, so that's gonna help with that. They know about it and they're trying to invade. That was the worst invade I've ever seen in my entire life, by the way. I mean, they were waiting there the entire I mean, time to get the invade and the then they worst missed the timing. It was a little aggressive. I okay, mean, at least they didn't die on their way out. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. The I'll most mediocre that. invade that you've probably seen in your life. The right in the middle. Gets nothing, gives away the things, but no one dies. But here, Anta Hero, let's take some damage. You're very correct today. I got you, man. It's like, oh, the most mediocre. Okay. In Spanish, they call that Asi Asi. <laughs> Big deal, man. I got you. I'm learning different languages. Poke comes out from Vala and Team Good Guys. Big lead here uh... for them, though. Yeah, big lead for them indeed. Malthiel is going to try and negate that lead, but here they come again, and the poke of Raid Boss is strong, but a good zoning, and that buys more time for Malthiel to do his thing. JPL eats a ton of damage here, but can save him into the mech. But they are starting to join around here once more. Zay really wants to get close to the Immortal. Hey, hey. If he fires away, they can take that easy. 
the back left is getting taken now. Uh, low on damage, but Vala will be the first to actually be dead. And Baker with the cleanse is keeping Mene alive. The heal's coming out. And Tima, good guys, will be forced to retreat. Yeah, we had Malthiel joining the fun, and he really started to enjoy that battle. Mene is still poking away from the side, and he is doing work. This is why you usually have him on uh, on a mage. A corruption, man. He's coming out constantly. Let me check out these stacks here. He's currently at three, 33, so... Goldan doing pretty good for himself. JPL has not gone back into mech form. Look at this. <laughs> Using the DPS from pilot mode. <gasps> oh! <laughs> get wrecked, son. I've all, I've been there before. When you're deep, when you're like, I'm just going to get a little more out. Just a little <laughs> more. And then you get completely wiped off the battlefield. The Immortal will go to Dignitas, but you can't deny it. That was pretty darn funny. I love this. It was him just standing there and just pew pewing away the entire time. I can just imagine someone voice being like, dude, go into me. Like, nah, 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 I got this. I got <laughs> this. DPS, just, man. Just that one here. Just, <laughs> just the one. <laughs> and then they see him and just blow him to pieces. Well, Dignitas will have their diva anyways. She'll be on the way. Nine and a half to nine. As Team Good Guys are setting up for defense. Grammy in the bottom working on the 10. And Team Dignitas, they're setting up for a yeah. five-man push. They want to come, go in with a, with a level 10. Once they hit the level 10 ability, they're going to try and invade. Even before that, they already start to make that move. JPL is there, and everyone just disengages. And Grayman is actually chunking down the fort at the bot lane. Yeah. He's doing solid work there. If he's left alone, and he is getting left alone, he's going to work his way through it. Team Ding Toss needs to make a decision soon here, as their own will get cleaned up. And the good guys, they hold, despite being behind a heroic level. Yeah, down to the bot lane, Antihero is now the question if he can really go in and finish the fort off. Probably not because he lost vision of the opponent, so he doesn't really know who's going to start to move in. But Anubarak is joining in together with him and is attempting to just help him out here. I don't agree with that comment, by the way. Yeah. I think your banter sucks. It's no bueno. <laughs> That's another Spanish term. No good. <laughs> like, <laughs> you are improving. I guess Thank two you. weeks ago, the only Spanish word that you knew was burrito. Yeah, it's my favorite one right there. Hang yeah. on, Dignitas is coming in. They're about to fight, and they have self-destruct. Nope, just kidding. All right. I mean, right now, they're still half a level behind. That isn't really too bad. Uda hasn't taken his 10 just yet. Li Ming going for... The wave of force here, mm -hmm. but we have a really good setup for them to to take these fights now. But I th still think during the immortal phases they are just going to try and focus on the objective. Yeah, I mean it's their best bet, right? Yeah, like they have so much damage they can output. They just going for the immortals really great. And Ding Ding Toss the other side, they control pretty well in team fights. They're going to get this fort on the bottom right side, and JPL just knocks everyone away. He really likes Diva, does he? He likes that Q button. I noticed yeah. he always does this big <laughs> sweeping concave every single time and makes sure to hit at least three people. I would say his average boops for a game are at least 3 to 3.5. Yeah, definitely. I mean, he just, <laughs> I think it's the only reason why he picks the hero. He's like, whee! <laughs> <laughs> flies back the entire time. I really want to see how they are faring with the Immortal now. We have Lightning Bone, by the way, on Rhaegar as well as the level 1 turn. So I think it has, has a bit of pressure against it. But now that slowly and steadily we're having uh, Xay starting to complete his own quest talent, he should be able to really push out a lot more of that damage here. And you can already tell. Divine Storm has been picked up. They were hoping to jump on top of the D.Va and drop the Divine Storm. But Team Good Guys were unable to do so. And they reveal what they're using Uther for. Yeah, and do you know... I really like the way that we have the good guys poke away at the Immortal. Dignitas, they can't let up. They are playing a very nice game so far, very disciplined and concentrated, but once they slack for a second, they could really miss out on a late game Immortal and maybe lose a keep here. Team Dignitas is doing their own poke here. A gun in particular poking here from JPL. DBL will have her mech that comes in for the rotation. Now, the good guys, they take a small second. They come around and they get the halftime show. Yeah, they do really well with this. As I said, they have the poke potential. You could just tell how much, in particular, Xay is doing with this Vala, but not only him, also Greyman. So they're just poking away on that, and that's a good position for him for them here. So they're trying to do the same thing once more. We have Malthiel to the left side, but if Raid Boss just continues to drop his combos and we see Xay on the Vala moving in, they should be really able to win this one. 
Oh, keeping it with a poke, and they're looking like it. Yeah, they're moving in quickly enough. It's down to a quarter health. Will they decide to fight? The Horrify does connect. Three people getting hit. Zay on the back right in particular is very low on health. Greymane will be burned down. Yeah, Greymane down, and Nubarak escapes. Okay, so they lost one hero, but they gained a pretty solid Immortal here. They're still behind. The Horrify was absolutely great. Mena did a good job with that, just as they were all starting to converge onto the Immortal and trying to burst it down. Question, of course, still remains, how much value can the good guys get out of Immortal? And with them not even moving to the top lane, I guess the answer is very little. It's content with, uh, what well, question he being able to have it. Uh, Dignitas. It's actually very interesting to look at their composition. That Horrify was a Horrify so well that I feel like if you had any other melee, that would have been two to three kills. But Malthiel being so sustain based and very slow with his damage, just couldn't secure a kill overall. That was actually JPL and Gul'dan working together that got that great main kill. Yeah. Which uh, is such an interesting take. And Team Good Guys, realizing the strengths of Malthiel, have just gone into a scenario where they just bring out so much damage that even if they get into a fight, they should be able to at least repeal their opponents away without forcing anything. I like their draft, actually, the more I think about it. For the map, it works. Yeah. It's definitely one of those things that is adjusted to the map. We have also Shroud of Wisdom taken on 13 for Malfiel, so we haven't really seen that before. Usually it was all about the trade value that you wanted to get here, but it is really just an attempt to give him spell armor to survive a little bit longer in these fights, and a lot of the damage that we're seeing for the good guys is actually in spell armor. They keep poking away. Dignitas is going for a chase. That top four was defended, but the bottom one finally falling for the good guys, and they're keeping up in talents. But how do they handle the late game? We've been talking about it all day. Malfiel, when you get to those 13, those 16 talents, he starts to become a real menace in that back line. <sighs> yeah, but I still feel like you have a lot of damage that you can work around, and, so, and just worst comes to worst, you start to cocoon him. Yeah, that's true. Especially but the Torn Souls come out. The one thing that I want to still highlight is that. I think the immortal race potential that we're seeing for the good guys is just increasing. Uh, we only need one more shot by Xay on the arrow to complete the quest talent. And, oh, almost had it there. Getting that quest finished up. Yeah, <laughs> not quite yet. Immortal's here in 18 seconds, and the good guys can start moving in. Ding Toss is setting up, though, for an engage. Mane, in particular, comes in, brings up the damage. BKB on the right, right. side, hit with the Tame and Strike. Here we go again. This time they're starting to take position a little bit earlier. A lot of poke happening already. Both of the team on level 14. And this is once again, this is a defense. Good position here for Dignas, a little bit farther up. Bit of free damage against the Immortal, that definitely helps. Well done, especially by Malfiel as anti-hero, Say and Raid Boss start to converge to the left and start their own poke. Go for JPL here, eating quite a bit of damage. Conquest talent completed for Vala. So this is now the moment where they can get even more value out of her. Dengtaw steps forward. JPL taking most of the harassment. Vizeli comes in on the side, looking at Ante Hero. Trying to apply something here. JPL getting kind of low, though. He might actually lose out on his mech. Yeah, it looks like he will. Barely boosts away, though, in the level five. 13 talent on Rega helps him. Down here, on the other hand, Stasis has been used, and that's the stun, but the Ancestor goes through. Diva is down, though, and that's a massive problem. Bakery is completely isolated. No way to escape. Cornered, and Snitch falls to Mena on the run, and they don't even care about him. They don't even follow it up. No, it's even good guys just killed three people. Zelia is trying to do his own job here, trying to 1v4. Gonna need to maybe pull back on that, as all five do group up on the Immortal and they start to burn it down, but good guys destroy in that team fight. Yeah, and completely leaving Gul'dan alive, just saying, guys, don't worry about Gul'dan, go for the Immortal. We win through the objective, we go for it right away, burst it down, and then we're gonna just push as five together with it, and that's what they're doing right now. It's an easy Immortal for them, absolutely no way for Dignitas to contest it anymore after losing these heroes, and I mean, if the good guys play it right, they will have a level 16 with us too. And they're working on it, too. They There's a wave up. up at the top they can't just simply take. Yeah, BKB has been called to move up there. All other members for the team have grouped up, healed on up, and gotten everything ready. They can definitely push as a unit as five, push in with that 16 and try to force a fight with Dignitas. Now, Dignitas will have an ability to slow down the fight. They're going to have Destruct available for JPL. Yeah, they have that, but I'm wondering about an engagement of Anubarak with the Cocoon and forcing the battle. And Dignitas what, doesn't want to risk that either. They are just moving back and saying, you know what, take the fall. We don't really care about that. We're going to make our stand at the keep. Can good guys get a keep, though? They have a lot of firepower in their arsenal, and now they have a tank in terms of the Immortal to move forward and deal with these turrets. 
Yeah, also we have Mena still with the Horrify ready. That's another tool that can be used if at some point the good guys overstep their mounts. So the towers are gone and the Immortal starts moving in. Very likely going to be a keep and Strafe already used in their back here. A bit of damage against BKB as Mena just starts poking with Gul'dan, but this keep is forfeit. The keep is falling and it is dead there. And the good guys, look at them, they pull away this new team here. I like it. It's just the best choice that they can make, though. Controlling so well, their shot calling has been on point here, and they know the advantage of the composition. They're not trying to go for a core rush. They know they can't really take too many shots if it comes their way, and it could lead to a throw. They just wait for the next Immortal phase. This is really well done. I like this a lot from them. But keep in mind that Dignitas with Malthiel on level 16 then is going to pick up even more damage. So they have a very, very nice shot for these later team fights. It's all about who starts Snowball here. And also, is the Horrify going to? If Mane is isolating a target again, that alone does so much here. Pressure pushing out the top. This should give the good guys some time to work on that bottom side and also clean up the mercenaries if Dignitas grabs them early. Dignitas, though, playing the correct card here and playing safe and not going to have that bottom lane push until the Immortal Face pops up and they need to make a play. Good guys, meanwhile, with full map control, will just take everything they can. That Malthiel on 16 really starts to worry me a little bit. And let's not forget that after 16, we also have Mene empowered even more by Aureal, getting the Wrath of Heaven for the extra 10% spell power. So that is really scary to deal with. But killing the keep, that gave the good guys a bit of a macro advantage now that they can try and play during those fights. All right, Ning Toss. I can handle the situation here. The good guys knocking on the front door. If they can get this immortal here, they have multiple options. They could push in the bottom and force a keep. They could even go to the top and start looking at a core oh. with catapult pressure. They're setting up with a gank. Zalia drops the E there. Digging toss aware something might be up. Gonna <laughs> ping everyone to ping back. Yeah, this is this is a tense moment for sure. They are sneaking around now. It's only two more seconds until the immortal is there. Let's look at the positioning and how much they can burst it down. So they rotate in immediately. They just start poking a little bit. BKB. Barely getting out. Okay, that was important that they are not losing him this early in the fight. Catapult is in the top lane. Grouping up here. Good guys, just need to play this nice and slow. Raid boss is poking where he can. Everyone else from the good guys? Up in the top. They're making sure that that mouth is not being too effective. Bottom yeah. right, though. Engage. Hang on. Yeah, at this point. And Li Ming is down. So Li Ming dying. Horrified being used. Zelia attacked, stunned. But the Ancestral saves him. Immediately also the Cocoon being used. The explosion hitting BKB. Kronos is completely on the wrong side of the map. Should be able to escape here, though. I don't think they even got vision of him. The problem still is that two of the heroes are dead, starting with Li Ming and then Anubarak dying, and that is Dignitas just aiming for an immortal. That's right, Team Good Guys is in full control, but they fumble as Li Ming gets picked off there. It looked like Golden was able to get off a full corruption on top of her and that was able to actually burn her away as that Lakeian damage just came in. And now, Dignitas finishing up this immortal. They are doing well. 10 seconds before Li Ming is even back on the field. 20 seconds before the tank is up for good gas. That is a really scary immortal. It's pretty big. Yeah. Yeah. That's all I got to say on that one. <laughs> Top lane will be the push here. And this is a great lane for Dignitas. They just need to clear up the catapults. And they have Malthy already on top of it. That layup. <laughs> the the alley-oop <laughs> dunked that one. Shaq no. coming in. I'm not touching that. Well, Digging Toss going to push in this top lane. They're going to head straight for the keep. Can they break through here? Good guys. They have the poker. Remember, they can clear up Immortals pretty quickly, but this one has a massive shield. Yeah, I am afraid this could be game ending depending on how this fight goes. If the good guys start to lose a hero, then that might be lights out. But for now, it's of course the keep that you aim for first. And I don't see a world in which the good guys can save the keep. The only question is can they punish the immortal or can they really damage it enough so that they're not threatened at the core itself? Well, and comes to the shields, but the keep, look at that, it's just falling quickly. Yeah, the immortal is just hurting so much at this point. BKB is already doing quite well. Nice dodge. Once again, JPL is whooping in, trying to isolate someone. But they are about to kill the Immortal. Anti-Hero is low, but should be able to save himself to the Nexus. And the Immortal is not going to do anything to the core itself. 
Okay, so a keep for a keep. Top left, top right. Team Good Guys and Team Jingtoss are tied in infrastructure. Experience slightly ahead for the good guys, but they live to fight another day. They're able to handle the push coming their way. It's basically reset. Yep. We have four kills against four, 19 and a half versus 19 and a half. Every team has lost the keep at the top lane. So, yeah, comes down to probably the next fighter and the next immortal. Yeah. One fight, one immortal. And that could be the difference between a win here for the good guys that had the series or Jiggly Toss will walk forward with the victory. And if you're the good guys, your bets are pretty good for the immortal. You seem to make sure not to get caught in a team fight. They're going to give up these marks as they should here. I think 20 is way more important. You just don't want to risk anything. Yeah, that was actually pretty aggressive from Jiggly Toss. Moving in and starting to steal this one away. It worked out for them, so that's already great. But let's see how we're going to, how the level 20 is going to work out here. Because that's really the big thing. Both of the teams picking up the Storm Talents and then fight for the next Immortal, which is very likely going to be the last Immortal of the game. So you guys have all five people on the top. They're trying to get the Catapult Brusher to swing into their favor. If they get a couple stacked up, they can start to get that wave to continue moving forward. Dig and Toss on the other side are pushing in that bottom, working on... That keep wall, maybe he's starting to get some keep damage overall. And here it is, Immortal. 20 seconds. It all comes down to this. Yep, Mega Fall has been chosen. We also have the Death Siphon on the side of Vala. And we are going with a Repulsion here as well. So maybe an isolation tool here for Li Ming that can help them to get one target pushed into the team and then take the fight there. It's an interesting spot. Uh, for Dick, but they didn't have any vision, so here comes the defense, at least for now. BKB already at the front. Mouth there is someone that we have to keep an eye out for. They're oh. trying to go for him and they blow him up! Zilly is not here! Just blew him up completely! And we get a reset here, immediately gonna have the mech being dropped down for the self-destruct. JPL on the front line, anti-hero anti going in for the auto attacks as well. JPL about to fall out of his mech, he gets killed last second, but Mane! Wow. Mane will fall! Bakery in trouble too. Team Good Guys are in a pretty solid spot. They're really going in. Zelia is back by now with a rebuy, but Rhaegar falls, and that's a five versus three. They blow up Zelia first, and then they go for the rest of the team. JPL is also dead. TGG just did it. They're gonna actually tie up the series. They're going straight for the core now. There is still an Ariel and a Malfi on the field, but it doesn't seem to matter at all. As now, Anti Hero with the Grey Mane is on top of the core with Bala here as well. Can Zelia do anything? It's not looking like it. Anti Hero is getting low on health here. Zelia trying to bring out whatever damage he can, but it is not enough. The core continues to fall 40%, no down to 30%. Zelia's trying, he's junking, but it is not enough indeed. 0% on that core, and we're going into a game five. TGG is forcing Dignitas into the fifth game, even with a rebuy on Malthiel. They just killed four heroes in that last fight. They dropped Malthiel, just pounced them in and took him out. Perfect coordination on their part with all the damage output that they had. And this is one of the, you have one punch at that moment. You go in, you drop the cocoon, you drop the damage, and you pray please die. Because if the target doesn't fall, you're more screwed. They get the kill, and then it's a four versus five for a few seconds until Malthiel is back, and in that time, they take down Rhaegar, they take down Greymane, and, uh, sorry, Mena on his uh, Gul'dan. <laughs> they just took the second map of Dignitas. Absolutely impressive. Something that I did not think would be happening. I thought by now I would be at the studio. I'm not going to lie. I thought yeah. it was a 3-0 easily here for Dignitas. Yeah. We move LA forward. LA traffic. Yeah, yeah. Team good guys. They learn a few things. Hey, good stuff. We'll see you next time. Uh, but they're here coming into game number five, and they're absolutely impressing everybody here, especially what we saw last week. I didn't think the good guys would turn around this quickly. Yeah. I, 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 me neither. Well, they didn't expect break. that either. They talked about it. They said, like, yeah, probably going to be 0-3. Well, let's go ahead and just get this commercial break out of the way.